make your pitch, multiply money, as opposed to struggling to pitch them on how great or affordable your product is. We're talking about how the money they invest with you today and become something more in the future. And that is an irresistible offer that'll close every single time. What's up, Closer Nation? It's your boy, Stuman here. Welcome to another episode of the Hardcore Closer Podcast. I'm glad that you're here. You know, so many people in the, the sales world, they're, they're always focused on selling a product or the results of that product. That's what we've been taught our whole life by legends like Zig Ziglar and Tom Hopkins and, and the, the OG triple legends that have been in this game for forever. They teach you to say, they teach us to sell a product or sell the result of what that product does, right? They say, nobody wants a drill, which is what we would be selling. They say, people want a hole. And I would say nobody really even wants a hole, right? They want a hole for something. Run wire through because they want a TV, right? They want a hole because... Well, who, who knows what the fuck they need? They want a hole because they want an earring. I don't know, but that's the thing. It's like nobody wants a drill and really nobody wants a hole. What they want is the result of whatever that hole gets them because nobody just drills a hole for a hole, right? So let me talk to you today about positioning your business, your product, your service, whatever it is that you sell to be something that's almost an irresistible offer every single time. See, there's a principle that I learned in sales when I was working in the finance industry. You know, when, when I was a loan officer, and I did residential and commercial loans for people. I, I, it was like the easiest job in the world for me. I hear these fucking sissies these days that work in the mortgage business talking about the rates are high, man. I don't know what I was going to do. Man, 7% was normal. I sold 12% mortgages to people who were happy as shit because that was a decent rate at the time that we were selling mortgages, right? Like, like you know, people want things to be easy forever. One thing about life is it's going to progressively get harder. You know, they had a meeting in the city that I live in because they're worried about traffic. And and the mayor was all, you know, he, 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 he kind of taken back or whatever in the meeting. And I was thinking, you know what? If I was mayor, I would have just been like, hey, Karen, you want to live in a city that's growing? Because if it's going to grow and it's going to have more people, it's going to have traffic. If you want to live in a city that sucks, move to fucking Allen. It fucking sucks. Nobody's fucking moving there. Go move there, right? Like, but they can't do that, clearly. <laughs> So I say all that because so many people, they get focused on their product or their service and they never get on the outside of what the benefit is. The benefit of Karen's house and all that traffic is if, if there's more people coming to your area, then your place is worth more money. So they're actually doing you a service by giving you more money. But if you're blinded by traffic and not the appreciation, the equity in your house, you miss that stuff, right? So we got to think, okay, so what are you selling? You're not selling a drill or a hole. What are you selling? When I was a, a loan officer, I would go back to my story now. When I was a loan officer, I understood that I was selling money, something that everybody needs, something that everybody wants in order. They, they wanted a dream home. They didn't want a mortgage. They wanted a dream home. And I'm selling the money that allows them to get a dream home. And it was, it was a great combination. I don't see why anybody goes broke doing that you know like people like I said they want easy shit and they quit the mortgage world when it gets higher rates or whatever it's like you didn't deserve to be in there for the low rates then you know like if you're not you're a real salesman can sell in bad times like bitch ass salesman go find the next fucking thing that's hot that's weak ass shit a good ass salesman can sell up down sideways don't matter I'm just saying I'm calling y'all out I'm just talking my shit because it's facts of facts right now back to the point so What's a good offer that makes things irresistible for you and your product? This is what you've got to figure out. You've got to figure out how your product multiplies their investment in it. And what I mean by that, like when you can come to this equation in your business with your product, service, whatever it is that you sell, when you can break it down like this, this is where the money piles in. When they go, damn, I put money in here and more money comes back to me, I'm in with that. When you can break down your pitch to I pay you, I make more, more money than I paid you, that's perfect. You see, so many people say, you know, this. say we go back to selling a mortgage, they say, well, a 7% interest rate surge just signed right here. It's a market rate plus one, but bullshit, right? Like, first of all, that's not what they want. They don't want an interest rate. Second of all, they don't want a mortgage. They want money to buy that house. They want that house. So what I do is I say, listen, 6% interest rate, the money that you're putting into this house today, it's going to be worth double that in seven years. This house that you're buying today for $400,000 is going to be worth $800,000 or more in the next 10 years. 
So that money that you're buying today, whether it be at 6%, 8%, 10%, doesn't matter, whatever, it's going into a tax, a potentially tax-free retirement account. If you live here for more than two years, you sell that thing. As long as you don't make $700,000 in profit, you're not going to have to pay capital gains or income taxes on that money as well. So every dollar you're putting into here, no matter what the fuck the interest rate is, because that's tax deductible anyway, is multiplying your money because it's building a nest egg of equity and the biggest asset you and your family own. Sign fucking here, Roger. I've had enough of your shit, all right? So that's how I rolled, though, without the last part just being funny. What's up, Poser Nation? I'm assuming you're here because you work in sales in one form or another. You're trying to get some sales together for your business. You're trying to get some sales together because you're working in a business, sales together so you can get a bigger commission check. The key to sales is not getting better at psychology. It's not getting better at using your words. It's not having a gift of gab. The key to making more money in sales is getting leads. And the better that you get at generating leads, the more hands you shake, the more money you make. Leads are hands that you're shaking. The better you are at generating the leads, the more money you'll make as a salesperson. The easiest way to generate leads online is with phone sites Dot com, right? Listen, you can shake only maybe 100 hands a day. First of all, you're going to get arthritis in your right hand. It's going to get sore. It's going to hurt. It's going to bother you. You may be able to get Advil at the local store. You may not be able to. Okay, it could be a problem. Second of all, but on the, the flip side of all of this, and digital side, I can make a post on Facebook and shake a thousand hands at once. I can make a post on Instagram and shake 5,000 hands at once. Why wouldn't I want to put myself in a position to where I can appeal and get leads from the masses instead of shaking people's hands one by one? That's where phone sites comes in. It's so simple that your grandma or your grandkids can both do it. They don't need to be trained. They don't need to be maintained. They don't need to code. They don't even need to be in the know. They just open up the phone, start filling out the website. The next thing you know, they got a phone site put up there. Generating leads for you or them or whoever the hell decides to use it better than any other platform in existence. It's faster, smarter, quicker than any other solution out there when it comes to building websites. So just go to phonesites.com forward slash closer and tell them Stuman sent you. Now let's get on with the show. But that's how I wrote. I showed them where, hey, this money you're putting in here is multiplying. Yes, you're paying two, three, four thousand dollars a month, but at some point in the future, three, five, six, ten years from now, you're gonna pull out hundreds of thousands of dollars down to be able to buy your second or third, whatever house you're on at that point, and probably make the payments on it cheaper than the house that you're in now because you'll have such a surplus of money to put down on it. Makes sense? So now all of a sudden, we're not talking interest rates. Now all of a sudden, they're thinking, damn, this thing's an investment for me as well. You know, a lot of people, they think, oh, it's my forever house, and they live there for five years, right? Let's get over that. Let's just say we're going to live there for five years, and let's look at this thing as a five-year investment and how I can multiply the money, how I can appreciate the principal, how I can accelerate the equity, mind you, that's going into this house. So what is it that you sell? right? Maybe sell roofs. You're like, how's a roof going to multiply somebody's money? You know, hey, maybe you sell steel roofs. And maybe you say, hey, once a year we get a storm around here. And so once every five years, your roof's had enough damage where you're having to replace it. I think it's seven years the state of Texas. You put a steel roof on this thing, you never have to replace it ever again, never. So if you're truly going to live here, if this is a forever house and it appreciates, it makes the house worth more because it's a steel roof, which makes the insurance payment go down because they know they're not going to have to replace it. So what you're doing is you're investing in this steel roof that appreciates the value of your house, saves you money on your insurance and makes it to where you never have to pay a 1% deductible in the event a storm messes everything up again because it's completely guaranteed. That's how the fuck you sell a roof, right? You're talking about multiplying money, not here, spend 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars to keep a roof over your head, which is something that we all just feel like we're entitled to at some point. No, instead, it's like, hey, you're multiplying your money. Same with solar. You're investing today. You get tax credits immediately that cuts that back. Plus, you're going to save monthly on your deal. Plus, when you sell your house, your house has appreciation and equity in it because the solar panels are worth money because they save the next person money too. Or you can crack in and save some money by giving back to the grid as well. This this way, every dollar that you put, you're finding back somewhere in the future compounded. So the dollar that you put in today, because of the savings, tax appreciation, and equity in your house, you're actually getting two or three dollars back four years from now for it. Makes sense, sir? Of course it does. Sign right here. When you start talking that language to people about how their money and their investment in your product multiplies the equity, accelerates the fucking asset, it makes things worth more, and their dollar worth more, they're going to get more money back than they're investing in your shit right now. That's a win. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I'm on it today. I know what you're thinking. Car guys are like, that shit will never work for us. The last couple years been a fluke, and cars never go up in value. They never go up in value. I, I, I hear you. 
Yeah, last couple of years has been a fluke. Normally, cars don't go up in value. So how do you sell that, right? So how do you sell that investment in your car? Let me tell you what, sir. You pulled up today in a 2008 Toyota Camry. It's worth $2,800. You paid $12,000 brand new for it in 2008. That thing's worth $2,800 right now. You can sell this, and it doesn't even cover the tax on what a car costs that car costs today in today's day and age and price range anyway. But let me tell you this. Cars lose value, sir, and you're fucked. Sign right here. That's the truth, man. I really can't help you on that. You know, your cars are really selling for a lifestyle and shit. They're not an investment. Insurance is something that, hey, it's an investment. You know, the insurance is, hey, you know, you're putting in $200 a month in insurance. Someone crashes into you and it's a $25,000 uh, totalization or whatever the fuck you call it when a car gets like smacked up and can't run anymore. You've got this car that's put out of service, $25,000. All you've had to do if you keep this thing for fucking five years is pay $6,000. We saved you. That money compounded in the event some shit isn't even in your, isn't even your fault saves you $19,000. So that dollar that you're putting in today is a $19,000 savings within the next five years according to your driving record. Sign here. So what I'm telling you in this show, other than I failed, obviously, at selling cars because I'm just too honest for that shit, right? I can't say, oh, you bring this back, it's going to be worth more money because it's fucking not. But here's the thing. Excuse me. Here is the thing. Coke's draining a little bit. You guys always fuck with me on that shit. I've done Coke like once in my life in the 90s. You know what I mean? We don't talk about what happened in the 90s. But but y'all always do it because I, I, I need to go... Let's go on an ADD rant here. I need to go see the doctor. They told me I got a deviated septum, and I'm like, but I haven't done that many drugs. And they're like, that has nothing to do with it. I'm like, I feel like it does, though. And I, I was laying there last night. I was like, man, I'm going to have to... I'm just sniffling away. It's, it's catching up. I'm going to have to go... I have to go handle this. So Anyway, back to the point. Didn't mean to sniffle on the show. I try not to do that, but every time I do, y'all always like, I knew he's on drugs, and look, he's talking fast this episode. Not on coke, goddammit. Anyway, learn how to make your pitch, multiply money, and make all the difference in the world. It'll set yourself up for success as opposed to struggling to pitch them on how great or affordable or priced your product is. Now, all of a sudden, we're talking about how the money they invest with you today multiplies and becomes something more in the future. And that is an irresistible offer that'll close every single time. Don't forget to leave me a five-star review and uh, appreciate you guys listening. Rise above.